So if I want to step his left front leg over, I need to know where his front legs are before I could do that. So if I can back him up and I get a sense of where his feet are, I know when to bring my thighs in. See? And he's following my feel, isn't he? Interesting. So pretty soon, you think about your position over the horse. You start to think about your movement of your seat your seat bones or your sit bones, and you start to think about the movement of your sit bones, you start to think about where are you looking and where are you directing your attention, and is your horse looking over here, right? Is your horse looking over here? And so they start to follow your focus. But it's not just your focus, because your eyes affect everything underneath you, and everything underneath you talks to the horse. But it starts here, it starts with your eyes, your focus, and you ride from there. We don't want to force it and overdo it. And that's called contortions. So when people at first, and I did a lot of this, this stuff, and I have to remind myself, do less, do less. But something like that would be a contortion is if I have somebody circle a cone or a mounting block, what people do is they look at the, you ever see this? They look at the mounting block and I say, okay, make an even circle. So they look at the mounting block. It twists my body. And what that twisting of my body causes is my horse to fall away to the outside. It causes them to fall out because I'm contorting. What are my tuning fork thighs doing? Well, my tuning fork thighs are telling him to step out. So don't twist, don't contort. Just look over their ears. So if I want to make a turn to the right, I might just look over his right ear uh, for now, over his right ear. If I want to go straight, I look over the pole. And if I want to go left, I might look over his left ear. Now, yes, if you're barrel racing or like if I'm rolling him back along the fence, it's very possible that I will look over here. But then he comes through that turn and he follows my focus there. So there will be times where you're going to look further to the side, but he matches and comes with you and he lines up with you. But for now, straight, you look over the pole and that squares you off. Your hands are square, your shoulders are square, your sit bones, knees, square. You want to go left, you look over the left ear. Right? Look over the right ear. And then you play around with this idea of, okay, I'm going to slow him down by relaxing my body. I'm going to squeeze right, squeeze left with the reins. So I'm going to might do a right squeeze, left squeeze. But I didn't really hold him. So pretty soon you start to play with those things. Right squeeze, left squeeze. And I'm not holding him anymore. The number, the number one cause for, for a horse to brace, well, it's a tie. It, the rider being out of position and the rider holding. If you hold anything, your horse has to hold back and brace back. So what happens is people say, well, I want to make a turn. So they take their hand and they go, I'm going to turn. And they turn and their horse does it with a, oh, I can't do that. So I like to think about asking and releasing or softening, coming back to center. So if I turn, what I'll do is I'll bring my headlight, my eyes, and I'll turn and come back to center. I'm going to exaggerate this. Don't, don't ride like this, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn and give and turn and give and go straight. And then I'm going to turn right. My hands come slightly to the right. Turn and soften. Turn and soften. Now, don't force that. It looks more like this. If I'm just turning, I swing and soften. Swing and soften. Swing and soften. Everything's a swing. Everything. My hips swing back to front. My hands swing to follow. His head swings up and down. His barrel swings left to right slightly. His legs swing forward to back. And in hunt seats, we talk about a horse, a relaxed horse swinging their hindquarters, a lovely swinging hindquarters. Everything swings. The ears even swing sometimes, don't they? They'll look like a, you'll see a, relaxed horse and the ears are swinging. Everything's swinging. You better be swinging up there. If you're moving, you, you don't want to be sitting rigid. And I want you to see some common positions that people get into with horses. 
Number one common position I see, this, leg forward, and then the rider kind of looks down, drops the sternum. Dropping the sternum is so common. People drop here. If I drop here, I drop him here. I'm pushing his back down, and he's hollowed out. Another position I see, people riding English sometimes, leg back pretty far, hollow lower back. You ever see a hollow lower back? There are a lot of instructors that tell people to push your chest out. And so people go like this. Has your instructor ever told you that? Push your chest out? Yeah, a couple people raised their hand. So you do this, your back is hollow. And no wonder you get off your horse and you go, man, my, my back is sore. So we don't want this position. And when we do this, the next thing that comes along is people's hands come back here. So all of a sudden, the horse is blocked and locked and they can't move, they're jammed. So what we want, two basic straight lines. And if you follow this, it can make a big difference in your riding. Straight line, shoulder, hip, heel. Shoulder, hip, joint, heel. <laughs> number two, there's a little leeway on this depending on what we're doing. But number two, straight line, Elbow through my forearm, through the rein, towards the bit or the hackamore. Again, if you're roping or something, there's certain exceptions, but in general, those are two plumb lines. And you'll notice something. When you get a straight line from elbow to bit, your arms follow naturally and your hips follow naturally. When your hands are too high, you'll go, my hands don't follow right. If they don't, because your hands, they're up here, it's hard to follow his head. I'd have to go down and up, and that would be ridiculous, right? So when people have their hands too high, you'll notice your shoulders aren't open and relaxed and soft. If your hands are too low, some people say, I want to get my horse's head down. My horse's head is too high. I want to get their head down. And so when your hands are down here, how do you think your arms would follow? Not so good. But when you have a straight line from elbow to bit, it's natural that your hands and arms follow smooth. And when your hands and arms are smooth, your hips are smooth. So the hand position is actually pretty important because it affects how your seat works. And everything's a chain, it's connected. So if we're out of place somewhere, we're, we're going to be out of place other, in other places as well. But that would be some pretty good starting points to kind of aiding and communicating and riding. And my goal is to get people centered and to get people riding from their, cent their center, their core, their invisible aids, your lower back, your seat, your weight. I, you don't see that as much. You'll see me use my hands, you'll see me use my leg, but it's hard for you to see when I'm using my lower back seat and weight. So most of our communication and aids should be delivered th through that part of our body. It's hard to do if we're out of position. It's hard to do.